Now, last but not least, we have Pavel Richter. You are the most famous man because you have been um, elected as the new CEO of Open Knowledge, the organization around all this open data movement, open movement. We have initially planned to um, invite and, and, uh, Rufus Pollock and he actually accepted. However, um, as now is Paul Richter, the new CEO, it, it, it makes more sense just to let him speak as the new man on the steering wheel of Open Knowledge. I'm very happy that you're here. Will you speak in English? That's yes, good. I will speak in English. Okay, that's good. Although you are from Germany, I am. you have been executive director from Wikipedia Germany. Or Wikimedia, Wikimedia Germany. Sorry, sorry, yeah. of course. Slight difference. And uh, for many years, and you know how to manage crowds like us, and I think um, that's also something which is necessary. Happy to be here, uh, that you are here, and thank you. let's go on. Thank you for the kind introduction. Um, and welcome everybody. I know I'm the only person between you and the lunch, and, uh, but there's only one door out, so I'm pretty sure I can control this crowd for 20 minutes. And hopefully what I'm going to talk about is entertaining and uh, informative enough um, to keep you in this very humid, very warm room. Um, but just so to get uh, things going a little bit, um, whoever in this room has used any kind of Wikipedia, any language, um, wherever. No, 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 no. Hand, show of hands doesn't work. Stand up, please. Yes, come on. I know, I know the result and it's, yes, you're right. It's a very easy trick to get you all standing up and uh, get your focus and attention and give you the ability to move a little bit after two and a half hours sitting down. Um, now, yeah, please sit uh, down again. And if you have ever edited wikidata.org, could you please stand up? <laughs> Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. So you are the people I'm going to watch um, because um, uh, you know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about Wikidata now. Uh, and you are Wikimedians, so you will have no hesitation to correct me, even I'm on stage, uh, when, I do, uh, when I say something wrong. So I'm going to focus on the people um, who know about Wikidata because what I'm uh, going to do now is um, to talk a little bit about Wikidata. That is because Wikidata was initially uh, created uh, within Wikimedia Germany, where I was for five years the executive director. But I want to go uh, a little bit beyond Wikidata. That's why my talk is called From Wikidata to Open Data and Beyond. So bear with me. Um, Wikidata tries, um, was initially conceived um, to help with a problem. Um, what you have here is a man. Um, he is an American. Um, he is a father of two kids. Um, he has two parents. Um, and he is the president of the United, United States. All of this information is static, except for one, that he's the President of the United States. That will change most certainly at the 20th of January 2017, when the new President uh, will be sworn in. So this changes, um, and that has some huge consequences, probably for the world, but especially for Wikipedia. Um, because Wikipedia has 212 articles about uh, this guy, um, and the fact um, and it has something to do with the fact that he's the President of the United States. And there are literally tens, tens of thousands of um, links within the Wikipedia projects in all languages um, that refer to this guy as the President of the United States. So what happens on the 20th of January is, and there is always a little competition within Wikipedia, who does this uh, edits first. So what's going to happen at the 20th of January, um, exactly at the moment the new President is sworn in, everybody will go into Wikipedia projects and change Barack Obama is not the President, but he's a former President of the United States. And then there is another one, probably a woman, um, who will be the new president of the United States. So this will get updated within the German language, the French one, the Russian, the Spanish. Um, that goes pretty fast. Um, uh, it will take only um, uh, um, fractions of a second. Um, but what about Swahili? What about Farsi? Uh, what about a language I don't even know how to pronounce that is spoken by 25 million people in India, um, has a Wikipedia article about um, Barack Obama, but only five people who were actually um, edit um, in that language. It can take days, weeks, months before this information um, is updated in Wikipedia because it's done by people, human beings. And a guy thought that might not be the smartest way to do these updates. And this guy is Daniel Brandicic. Dani approached us in 2012 with the idea of Wikidata. Wikidata was as an idea born in, I think, 2004. There were concepts and papers about it, but he actually wanted to do it. And he asked Wikimedia Germany if it would um, um, help. And uh, we uh, 
uh, most certainly wanted to do that. So, um, uh, Danny uh, is the father of Wikidata. Uh, he worked for Wikimedia Germany for uh, two years as the program director uh, for Wikidata and is now working at Google at the Knowledge Graph team. And that's not a coincidence um, uh, because uh, Google um, is a very big player in the field of structured data because that's what we are talking about. So what is Wikidata? It's structured data. It's a database of structured data that has um, that is Edit, uh, that can be edited by people like you and me. So it's um, it's an editable database. It is open to everybody, um, as is all uh, all Wikimedia projects. And I thought, think there are four or five people in this room who actually edited Wikidata. Uh, Wikidata. It is, secondly, multilingual. That's very important, um, as you're going to see when we talk about what you can actually do with Wikidata. It is, thirdly, um, provides one common source of data types. So the information that Barack Obama, is, the President of the United States, is provided in one space at Wikidata and can then be used in all other Wikipedia projects, uh, in all other Wikimedia projects, as a matter of fact. As a matter of fact, it can be used on any web, web page in the world, um, referring to this um, uh, data item that states that Barack Obama is the President of the United States, uh, United States, no change. Um, so, um, it is, um, and that we're going to see as well, is accessible both for humans and machines. So even so, uh, it's created and edited by people, by humans, like you in this room, um, it is accessible by machines, and it gets accessed quite heavily by machines. And I'm going to show you a couple of uh, demonstrations uh, on how the data with the data, Wikidata can be used by machines. Um, and um, for the geeks in the room, um, it's powered by a software called uh, Wikibase, which is quite a revolution for Wikimedia because it's the only Wikimedia project that does not run um, on MediaWiki. Um, every other uh, Wikimedia project runs on MediaWiki, not Wikidata, that runs on Wikibase. That is a very smart decision, if you ask me, because Wiki, um, um, MediaWiki is quite good for, um, for text, but it's not quite good for media files, and it's definitely not good for data. Um, everything within Wikidata um, is, of course, uh, open li openly licensed. I don't need to um, uh, go into this any further within this room. So, that means exactly what? Well, Wikidata, that's because this one is... Okay, um, doesn't matter. So, Wikidata will be for data, for structured data, um, what Wikipedia is already for encyclopedias. It will be the one single point where you can um, find structured data information um, and then can use it within Wikimedia projects, within your own website, in any other database. Um, uh, accessible by humans and machines alike. Um, so, enough talk, let's see how this looks like. Um, that's a data item. It's called Q233015. It sounds a little bit like uh, Star Trek or so, but it isn't. It is the name under which um, open knowledge goes at Wikidata. So, um, by the way, the name is wrong. It's not Open Knowledge Foundation any longer. It's Open Knowledge. Somebody needs to change that, um, but I don't edit um, uh, the page for the organization that I work at. Um, so, what you see here is Wikidata. That's, that's structured data. It tells us that Open Knowledge is a non-profit organization. It tells us that it's based in the United Kingdom. Um, it has uh, geo-coordinations um, down there. It tells us who the chief executive officer is. That would be me. And yes, we do have a website. So uh, all this information um, is uh, structured um, within Wikidata. And as you can see it down here, um, the little add button. Um, if I wanted to add any kind of uh, information, I would just uh, be able to do so. I didn't even, wouldn't even need an account. So if I knew something about open knowledge that's not in here, I could just go in there and edit it. So uh, that's like Wikipedia, um, um, only for data. So very big, um, um, if you ask me, because uh, of course I can correct uh, mistakes, um, uh, add knowledge that I have, um, and so on. That's a Wikimedia, Wikipedia pro, uh, uh, principle you already know. So what is it um, then actually um, uh, use for, uh, useful for uh, within the, the Wikipedia project? That you might have seen, um, that uh, is a screenshot out of the uh, English uh, Wikipedia article about open knowledge, uh, and it's a so-called info box. It summarizes main information about the organization. That's nearly every larger Wikipedia article in English. Uh, the English language Wikipedia loves info boxes. The Germans are a little bit uh, touchy about that subject, subject, but I won't go into that any further. Um, so you're going to find quite a lot of information in here. 
if, I, if you wanted to update them because something changed, what you would do right now is um, that's wiki text. So that's how it would look like uh, within Wikipedia to change it. Um, and um, um, that's not very friendly. With um, Wikidata, um, you've seen the interface, it's much easier. And you would then, within the info box, only link to the data item um, Q1, what? 2, 1, or oh, whatever. Uh, so you would link to this uh, 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 data item and get all the information in the info boxes. And you have to do it only in one place at Wikidata and not in all the 11 languages uh, that have an article about uh, Wikipedia, uh, about open knowledge um, as an organization. So that's um, uh, basically one very easy way to use it within Wikipedia. But um, uh, it goes far beyond. Um, so once again, uh, uh, our uh, uh, famous man from the US, um, uh, as I mentioned, he's not only the American president, he's a father, he has a wife, um, he has parents, and what you could, could do then is you could use this information and generate um, um, an I'm in lack of English words here. What's uh, that called in English? Um, uh, sorry? Uh. A graph, yeah. So you could create a graph that has Barack Obama here. Um, he's the father, that's the blue ones for Sasha um, and uh, Malia Obama. Uh, he's married to Michelle Obama. You could do this a little bit more complex with Johann Sebastian Bach. So this is all generated out of uh, relationship data within Wikidata. Uh, there is no human interaction here. And you're going to see Johann Sebastian Bach up there. And he has a, a very extended family. Um, uh, I tried to do this with Queen Elizabeth II, uh, but unfortunately, the demo only works for uh, 250 uh, persons to uh, be on one graph. And uh, the uh, graph for uh, Queen Elizabeth would be way over 500 in, uh, relationships uh, over time. So um, that's one way how you can use um, Wikidata. There's another one. You might be interested in administrative divisions of India. Uh, so it might be probably a little bit hard back there to see this, but what you actually see is India, uh, and it has the uh, administrative divisions of India in there with the English names in it. And all, everything you see here is generated out of Wikidata. So there is not a Google Maps or an OpenStreetMap lying behind it that has just the, the names on it. Uh, mm -hmm. Due to the geolocations, um, um, the, um, we, uh, it, it is, of course, possible to use the data to create maps. Um, um, and because I already mentioned it, it can be, um, Wikidata is multilingual, um, you can change very easily the language. Uh, on the top and left uh, corner, it says now the, uh, um, it's the English language. Um, you could just switch it into Russian. Uh, and now you have the names for the administrative divisions of India in Russian. And you could, could do that for every other language um, as long as the information is available in, in Wikidata. So that's uh, another way how you could use Wikidata. And knowing that lunch is approaching, um, I gave you an extra treat. Um, um, as long as you're not a vegetarian, that's a very yummy meal. Um, and um, so it's a menu. It tells you it's, there's a cheeseburger, cheeseburger, macaroni and cheese, uh, shawarma, stuff like this. It tells you what the price is, and it's all in English. Um, so um, what you could easily do using Wikidata, because it's multilingual, you select another language. And all of a sudden, um, I think it's Mandarin, but I'm not sure. If somebody knows what uh, Korean, that is. Korean. 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 Ah, yes, thank you. So all, all of a sudden, you have the same information in Korean, or um, you can have it in German as well. Um, we don't do the calculation for the prices yet, but that could be uh, added very easily. So um, that's something that is very far away from Wikipedia and the uh, Wikipedia mission, but it is another way how you could use the information. And that ju should just give you a very first impression to think about the abilities um, that lie in a, a free uh, and open licensed uh, database called Wikidata. You can get, because it's, uh, uh, it's edited by people and curated by people like you, you can get involved and you can even have some fun doing so. You can build your own tools, uh, and that's uh, uh, blue because it's a link. Um, so you can, uh, it links you to the Wikidata toolkit, um, where if you are a little geeky and are into building your own tools, you can uh, play around with the toolkit and build your actual tools using Wikidata. If you are like me, and I'm not a techie, um, but I like to play games. So there are games uh, associated with Wikidata, um, and I was uh, thinking about this 
uh, at Professor Bernstein's uh, talk earlier today, um, what uh, the games, for example, do is they show you a picture and ask you, is this a human being um, in the picture? Because it's very easy for us to see if this is a human being or not. And if you say, yes, it's a human being, then Wikidata gets automatically updated by the category, this picture shows a human being, um, which is quite important. Um, and you can do that on, uh, on your commute to work, um, not if you're driving, uh, don't play and drive, but otherwise, um, feel free to play these games. Um, um, and if you are an Android app uh, developer, please, please transfer this into an app, because it would be really great not to have it on the web, but also be able to play it at least on Android. The future of open data is wide, wide open. Um, we are, there's a prototype for something that's called Weary. Uh, Weary uh, sounds a little bit like Siri, uh, the application within your iPhone, uh, your personal assistant. Um, Weary is exactly the same, only based on Wikidata. Uh, so you can go to Weary and ask questions and you get even um, um, uh, um, a, sp uh, a spoken reply. Um, it's in very, very early alpha stage right now, um, but uh, the whole project is only three years old, so uh, give it some time. Um, we're gonna, we will be able to translate articles, that will be very important um, for the dissemination of knowledge, um, because it's easy if you're, uh, uh, when we're talking about large languages, that there are so many languages that have only a couple of handful of people working in the Wikipedia, uh, in their respective Wikipedia. Maybe the, the uh, Wikipedia in Swahili has only 5,000 articles. Uh, it could use uh, Wikidata to create very basic articles about important information, and by that, getting um, uh, the language uh, Wikipedia kickstarted, um, attract new editors, um, and get um, Wikida Wikipedia really working. So translation of articles is something we're going to see a lot um, going forward. That's awesome, isn't it? Um, of course it's awesome. And uh, that's why in uh, 2004, uh, Wikidata received the very prestigious Open Data Publisher Award um, last year in London. And uh, you see here Lydia Pitcher. Lydia is at Wikimedia Germany, the uh, product owner of uh, Wikidata and the person for you to contact if you want to go further into details with Wikidata. Um, I'd like to um, go a little further. I mentioned that um, in, my, in the title of my talk already. I want to take the opportunity um, in front of this audience to talk about two things that um, I find important, and I come back to Wikidata um, talking about them, but that go beyond uh, Wikidata. First of all, it's open data for the people, by the people. That's a principle. For the last years, what we have done, and we were very, very successful, is uh, the portal approach. Um, so there's the open data portal in Switzerland, open data, data.gov in the US, data.gov.uk, and it's uh, done in a, a, a lot of countries. That's data portals um, that we use. And they were very good. Um, uh, they were very good for um, educating people about the value and the, uh, what it means to have open data, what you can do with it. It was very good um, um, because it made data available that's, uh, that wasn't available before and could be used to improve people's lives. And second, thirdly, we, it helped us as a movement, as organizations, as networks, it helped us to build tools around how to use open data, how to pre present them from an app to CCAN. Everything was, and the processes behind open data were developed using the portal approach. And the portal approach will be very important uh, going forward, no doubt about it. But um, there are two limitations built in the portal pro, uh, uh, approach. And they're both intentionally, yeah? so they are not mistakes by design, they were meant to be there. First of all, it's only possible to have data um, opened that is available. Um, so if there is no data, um, you cannot put it in a, in a portal. Um, and that happens quite often, uh, that data is actually not there um, to be opened up in any form or way. And, um, the second uh, a limitation of the portal approach, in my view, is that it limit that it um, doesn't ask what data is needed. Um, and it just looks at what's available and can be opened up, regardless if it's useful, um, usable, and used. Um, so and it can be, and, and there are instances out there in the world. Of course, none of them are uh, on this wall here. There are instances where data portals are used 
to give the impression of openness uh, by dumping useless data in it um, without the, uh, uh, any use case uh, to it. So in the future, what I'd like to see is that we talk uh, with these people and these organizations and other civil society organizations and ask them, what's the data you need? And if the data you need is, avail uh, is not open, we're going to demand it by governments to be opened up. If it's not available uh, because the data is not there, um, we can either demand that it get, gets created and then opened up, or we do it on our own uh, using tools like Wikidata um, and stuff like this. So um, get, making data available um, uh, that is actually used and uh, demanded by civil service organizations um, to um, uh, uh, have the ability to foster the change they are looking for. Uh, that's basically, um, uh, I think, the thing we need to do besides and in addition to the portal um, aspect. I was planning to talk about uh, one specific um, uh, project that's open trials. Um, because that's where uh, we as Open Knowledge uh, tried it once. And uh, unfortunately, I have to limit myself because uh, of uh, time constraints. Uh, but just to give you um, a very short idea of what it is, um, uh, we were approached by Ben Goldager, um, the author of Bad Farmer, who's uh, uh, doing research into uh, pharmaceutical um, uh, tests and trials. And he uh, told us about um, the uh, huge data sets that are created by uh, uh, randomized uh, uh, tests um, that are necessary to have a new medicine approved. But the data is not available. And if you try to get it uh, available, what you get quite often is that 60 pages of blacked out PDFs. Um, and that's an actual case. Uh, that's what, sign, uh, what uh, activists got after three years of freedom of information requests um, to get uh, trial uh, pharmaceutical trial data for um, something called Remonabant. Um, and they got, all they got after three years were 60 pages of blacked out um, uh, PDFs. That's not funny, uh, actually, because only m uh, months before uh, these PDFs were released, the medicine was taken off the market uh, because it has uh, very serious side effects uh, and could trigger suicides and, very, uh, uh, and other um, uh, deathly uh, outcomes. Um, so it would have been great if the data would have been available three years earlier, so we could have a look at it uh, and, uh, and uh, do what we do with open data. But it wasn't. So open data, open trials is one um, moment where we listen to somebody who said um, there is a need for openness and it's not there. So please help us. You know about openness. I know about farmer. Together we have, we do open trials and get um, the information um, opened up. The second thing, uh, aspect I'd like to talk about uh, very briefly, it's, um, and I'm using a quote, um, a, an altered quote by uh, Bill Clinton here, it's the openness is stupid. Because I strongly believe that the internet in itself is neither good nor bad, um, it doesn't create equality, and it most certainly um, doesn't change the world, and it doesn't lead to a better life per se. Um, so what I for myself decided is that I don't want to talk about the internet as technology anymore because technology never actually changed anything. Uh, it's always people that changed uh, something. So Gutenberg invented the printing press, um, but it was Martin Luther, Luther who used it to distribute uh, the Bible in German, um, and it was, I wrote it down, William Tyndall who did it for the English language. And so they used a tool that was available to them, um, but um, uh, they used it to empower people, uh, and that's what um, technology should do, and that's what it's important for me, um, that uh, technology in itself um, doesn't mean anything, as long as it doesn't empower people um, to uh, actually improve their own life. And um, so that's why I believe that openness um, as a principle is the missing link between internet as a technology and improving people's life. Um, it is openness that needs to be sewn into the fabric of the internet. It's openness that needs to be at the heart of the digital age. Um, and only if something is open, um, if, uh, it is available to people in a way that's actually meaningful and can improve their life. Otherwise, we are talking about a corporation that is just trying to broaden uh, the customer base, uh, uh, for example, using internet.org. Um, um, which has nothing to do about open, it's only about free. Um, um, but that's what's happening in the developing countries right now. People are using a closed internet um, um, and uh, by using internet.org. And what I want to see is that we use um, uh, openness as a concept and as the missing link between the technology, which is nice to have, um, but what we actually want to achieve, that is um, uh, giving people, empower people to change their own life. And that's not going to happen by chance or just because we wanted to. 
because there are powerful enemies. Um, there are organizations that uh, um, want closeness, that profit from closeness. So it won't be easy. It's about choices we make. It's choices um, open versus closed. It is choices collaboration versus control. It's a choice we make uh, versus uh, empowerment versus exploitation. That's something we as people um, can do and we um, have a good chance to prevail because we actually came a long way. We know already what we are talking about. We have tools and processes. We are many. Uh, that's important. We have a critical mass. Uh, 3,000 people are regularly working on Wikidata, and that's only Wikidata. 200 people are in this room. That's a critical mass that can change something. So we started it as geeks. We formed a community, but we will change the world only as a movement. Thank you very much.